There are a few very important known unknowns I have come to discover in my 19 years. One of which is the fact that I am, without, the, without a doubt, the smartest person I know. Now wait a minute, I know that sounds vain, but just because it does come across as a little snobbish, it don't make that fact untrue. And when I say smartest person I know, I mean like personally. You see, I feel like I know somebody like Lauren Hill from her music. And to me, she's amazingly intelligent. But because I don't really know her, I can't tell for sure. However, the people that I come in contact with and communicate with on a day-to-day -day basis can't even begin to comprehend me. It's not that I'm some kind of whiz kid when it comes down to scholarly achievements. Although, I'm no dummy there. I read about four books a week, sometimes more, sometimes less, on various topics and various authors, from Carter G. Woods to Hemingway. Yet that's not the smarts I'm speaking of today. I'm what you will call mm, street smarts. You see, Lovely, who is my, at the present, missing in action mother, taught me at a very young age to be a hustler. And by some freakish miracle, I have excelled at it. Lovely say she saw this gift in me in the delivery room. So when it came down to her writing my name on my birth certificate, she wrote Butter. Yes, you heard me correctly. My name is Butter Baby LaRue. Go ahead. Go ahead and laugh. Most people do. Until they realize that I have separated them from their wallets or credit cards or anything else that catch my eye. As easy as a knife slices through warm butter. You see, one of my greatest achievements, and I probably shouldn't be too proud of this, but I am. I convinced Crime Stoppers to, do to donate $5,000 to my victims of Stolen Identities Outreach Program. That one, that one put me on the map. Even Lovely was amazed at, the, at it before she ran off with four of my $5,000 come up. That's lovely for you, though. My mother has the world's most expensive crack addiction. But I love her. She's all I have. Folks say when Lovely first stepped foot off that Greyhound from Louisiana, she had knocked the city of Chicago down with her beauty. They say back then, Lovely could make a man do just about anything she wanted them to. All but two men, of course. My father, who had run out on Lovely when she told him she was pregnant, because, you know, he was young and he had his life ahead of him. Yes, his words exactly. And that damn dollar bill. Uh, uh, uh. Y'all, y'all don't know what hate is until y'all experience my feelings for dollar bill. Yes, I hate him. But leave it to Lovely to adore the slimy pimp. He came into our lives when I was about six. He introduced Lovely to crack and then started pimping her out. At first, he only had her going to high, you know, high, high paid clientele like the governor and the mayor of this great city, all according to Lovely. But soon the crack started taking its toll on her. And the high paying businessmen, they didn't want to pay the big bucks for her no more. So what did Dollar Bill do? Mm-hmm, you guessed it. He put her on the corner. Imagine that. My lovely. She stands on the corner and sells her body from him every night. I want to kill him. Every day I pray that somebody roll up on that fool and put a bullet in his head. I want him dead so bad. I don't care who killed him. I don't care how he died. I just want him dead. Maybe then lovely will be free. Maybe then I'll be free. Anyway, I digress. I won't put more strain on my heart and my body thinking about him when I don't have to. I was telling y'all about how smart I am. <clears throat> but this is where my story changes. You see, I was the smartest person I knew until the summer of 96. And, I mean, technically, it still is 
the summer of 96. I just thought it sound better for my story if I worded it that way. Where was I? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lovely's expensive drug habit. Because of this and that slimy pimp, I have lived on the 17th floor of the Taylor Home Projects my entire life. Now, some people in my building, they depressed by where they stay, but not me. You see, every morning, I wake up to the most beautiful sight in all the city of Chicago, my babies. I have 52 of them, and they're all squeezed in this little two-bedroom apartment. Now, before you shake your head at me, let me clear up some things. My babies are plants and not children, and they are blooming and beautiful and healthy. My plants are my passion. And in my, little space, in my little space, I grow as much as I can. I like to challenge myself. I grow things that people would never expect to be growing in apartment 17D, Taylor Home Projects. For example, I have a five-year-old lemon tree that produces a lot of big, fat, juicy lemons each year. In the summertime, me and, me and lovely boy, we make pitches and pitches of fresh lemonade. Now, I'm pretty sure that we're the only ones in the projects drinking fresh lemonade from organic lemons what yeah yeah anyway anyway so i also have a fig tree a miniature pomegranate tree and my greatest accomplishment a cherry tree i grow lavender chamomile peppermint and lemongrass but what i really like to do is go to the garfield park conservatory i promise you y'all there is no place on earth like it and it sits smack dab in the heart of my hood. When I was a little girl, Lovely would take me there and we would stay there for hours looking at all the exotic plants. She told me that her mama had the prettiest garden in all of Louisiana. She said she grew up on a 32 acre paradise. She said my love for plants came from my grandma. Once I asked her why we didn't see my, go see my grandma. And she said it was because her mother didn't love her. That, y'all, I couldn't understand. Lovely is the world's, man, she the best person in the, whole, in the whole world. And my child brain couldn't comprehend at the time why somebody could hate her. Well, Lovely, I love you, I had told her back then. I love you more than anything in this world. And that, y'all, was the first time I saw my mama cry. I threw my little arms around her neck and I hugged her tight. Willing the love I felt for her to come through my arms and into her body. She smiled to me and dried her tears. Then she showed me something that will soon become my addiction. She calls it the Kansas City Shuffle. While looking real hard to the left. I mean so hard that even I strained my neck to see what she was looking at. She came up with a little shrub of a plant that only grows in Africa. The Garfield Park Observatory. And now, apartment 17D, Taylor Home Projects, in her right hand. When I saw that little baby plant, in her, when I saw that little baby plant, my eyes got wide, y'all, because I couldn't believe what that indicated. She winked at me before putting the little shrub in my hand. There ain't nothing too good for my butter, baby. You remember that. And I have. I now grow a good majority of the plants that grow in the conservatory. And mine are more healthier and stronger. I don't consider the plants that I take from there as stealing. Mm -mm. I consider myself a researcher. You know, I like to try different things and see what growing mediums work and what produces a better plant. I also like to outgrow the ladies at the conservatory. I talk to them sometimes, y'all, for hours. And we talk about growing meetings, and they are so surprised at how much I know me being just a young ghetto girl. Anyway, I like to tell them, you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. <sighs> I've digressed again. Okay, where was I? Oh, yes. Okay. So, the beginning of the end of my life as I knew it began on a Thursday morning. Lovely had been missing now for three days. But I wasn't panicking yet because Lovely have done the disappearing act a couple times before. I just wish she would call me so that I know she was okay. So after showering and dressing in my green cargo pants, my white tank, my brown Tims, 
I decided today to let my thick hair go wild and untamed. I just put a little water in it, brushed it straight back, and I let the wind take wherever it wanted to take it today. My hair is naturally brown like Lovely's. In certain lights, it kind of looked red. I wore it naturally because I read a book that I had borrowed from the library called 400 Years Without a Comb when I was nine. And I was so mad when I finished, I refused to let Lovely relax my hair again. I even had her cut the perm out of my hair. And y'all, <laughs> that was the second time I saw Lovely cry. It's a shame to cut such beautiful hair, she had said. But I didn't care. I wanted it gone. I never wanted to perm it again. Now, ten years later, my hair was my best asset. At least I thought so. Sometimes I use some brown gel, you know, the kind that you get from the beauty spa from 99, for 99 cents, to slick my sides down so that my ponytail look, you know, fresh and tight. Then I get my pick, my afro pick, you know, the one with the black pick, power to the people. Yeah. Then I get my pick and I comb my puff just right. People tell me it looks like a brown flame in back of me. On the days when my spirit feels wild and free and reckless like today, I don't even bother putting it in a ponytail at all. I just rock my puffy curls that fall past my shoulders. Lovely say it reminds her of how Diana Ross used to wear her hair. But what Diana Ross hair was black, mine is brown. I don't really do makeup too much, you know, maybe just a little lip gloss. Don't really wear a lot of jewelry either. Just a little gold necklace with a tiny bead charm on it. That Lovely had stolen from the pawn shop some years back for me. After taking one last look in the mirror to make sure everything about me was put together, I headed for the kitchen and put on a pot of coffee. A must for me in the morning. I can't even begin to focus without coffee. While waiting for it to brew, I went to check on my babies. Stopping by Old Radio, I first popped in the Easy Buy You soundtrack and played a little child with the blues by Eric Bardu. The kind of mood I was in this morning. I play music for my plants every morning, but what I played always depended on how I felt. Whenever Lovely pulled one of her disappearing acts, I always feel alone, you know? So I was always playing the blues. She's the only person on this planet that understands me. I need her. <sighs> After nurturing my babies and drinking my coffee, I went to the fridge and grabbed four apples, another addiction of mine. If I could, I would eat a bag of apples a day. It's not just that I love the taste of them. I love the texture of the apple on my tongue and at the back of my throat as I swallow it. Yeah, I know, like my name, that sounds real weird. But I'm pretty sure there's something weird about everybody on this planet. In fact, I'm positive. So. After stuffing three apples in the left pan, in the left pocket of my cargo pants, I put my latest book I was reading, The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck, into my right. I took a bite out of my breakfast apple and I headed out to see what this day could bring. 